The best way to fail at indie game development is to never try, but let's assume you do try. Here's how to fail. Music and sound are not really important to a game, so obviously we should just kind of ignore it until the game is almost done and add it in as a second thought. Sure, music and sound convey more emotional context than any other component in your game, but do we care? Not really. So let's talk about music first, and let's also be honest, music's hard to make, so we should take as many shortcuts as we can. Just find some free chiptune mixer and make a beat with a random assortment of notes. And there we go. Does it matter what kind of game we made? Nah, a chiptune beat without a melody is perfect for any type of game. Plus, you might not be musically inclined, so it'd be best to continue to believe that chiptune jumbles are your only option. Learn to write music? No way! The years of time it takes to learn to code, use a specific game engine, draw, 3D model, design, level design, or market a game are all important tasks. Music is just whatever. So why would you put any time into learning how to do that too? Who needs to be well-rounded? Alternatively, you could pay someone else to write the music, but that costs money. Lots of it. It's impossible to find anyone out there who doesn't charge about $160,000 for 10 seconds of music, and there's no need to dig deeper than just a few minutes of searching on a freelance website. Networking, time, and saving a bit of cash couldn't ever find anyone affordable, and if you ever did find someone like that, which is very unlikely, try to talk them into giving you their services for free, with the promise of exposure as payment. I'm sure they will appreciate that. But what if you are musically inclined? This means you also don't have to do any more learning or research, such as how to make a main theme, and branching themes that tie together, or how to fully capture a specific emotion, or build tension and deliver payoffs for events on screen along with other deep music writing strategies and concepts that would only be learned by studying the masters of cinematic music and their works. There's no need for this, because you already know how to make music. So just make a beat and go with it. Sure, unique tracks based on level or environment could really capture the vibe and deliver a memorable experience for the player, but that would mean you'd have to write those tracks. No thanks. Many games have a unique aspect where the events in-game depend greatly on the player's choices. For example, a player could go from casually picking flowers to fighting a massive boss and back to collecting colorful fauna in a matter of seconds. Thus there is a demand for adaptive soundtracks, songs that use code to flawlessly flaw between moods. But ain't nobody got time for that! Remember, we're trying to fail here not be an icky, try-hard, successful developer. Okay, let's move on to sound. The things we need sound for are jumping, using abilities, if your game has that, and uh, yeah, that's all. People will be able to see stuff happening on screen, so they don't need a sound to tell them that it's happening. I mean, what are we trying to do here? Be immersive? Captivate the player into a promised experience? Make them feel like the world we have hand-designed and poured months or even years into as a tangible place with character and personality? Nah, bro, forget that. Plus, think of how many sounds that would be if we actually took the time to consider everything on the screen and asked ourselves, what sound would that make? We would have to spend more than 15 minutes adding sound effects. Ridiculous. And most likely, there are not enough random objects next to your desk that you can smash together to static-inducing volume to even make such a variety of sounds. I mean, there are websites with tons of sounds that can be downloaded for free, but we're not going to talk about that. Anyway, now that you have your chiptune song without a melody that will play on repeat forever, as well as your four sound effects, just turn everything up as loud as possible and refuse to make a mute button or volume controls. After all, you had to make that song, and you had to burp into your mic for those sound effects, so by darn, people are going to hear it. And of course, if you follow these instructions carefully, you are bound to succeed at failure. Hey, thanks for watching. Welcome to the end screen. It's nice and blank here, except for these. Ooh, look at those. So nice. Fancy. I mostly just keep them here as decoration. I mean, I could draw something, but eh, I do enough of that already. Yeah, we'll just have these for now. Bye.